Hello, Business 330 students. This is Professor Hassey. It's our week number three class lecture video to review some of the key topics and assignment number one, which was posted this week, and it's due on Sunday, June 27th. Our subject this week is the past, the present, and the future in finance, and that's called the time value of money. Placing different values on money today or in the future all determined by interest rates, the amount of time, and the amount of periods involved in that calculation. And that's what we're gonna review here in this week's lecture. And also review assignment number one. This is the first full assignment that you have in our course. Uh, and uh, I'll go over that and make sure everybody is uh, feels comfortable with that material. So let's begin. Last week, our subject was financial statements and analysis. And that's a, another key component in finance is to understand what's going on within your company, within the industry or the market you represent in your business, and what's going on with your competitors. And we took a look at the, at the big three financial statements, uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. And there's a question on this week's assignment that has to do with this information. So make sure you uh, take a look at this uh, review file from last week to refresh your memories. And remember the financial statements tell us in the case of the balance sheet, the financial position on a given date of a company. The income statement tells us the profitability of the company for a given period of time, revenues minus expenses. And the cash flow statement tells us how and where cash inflows and outflows came from in the past accounting period, usually 12 months, in cash. Cash flow from operations, financing, and investing. And those are key determinants of financial statement work. Then we looked at chapter four, which is financial statement analysis. Taking the financial statements and looking at prior years for trends, looking at competitors, looking at the industry average and see how we do compared to other companies. And we looked at the current ratio, the debt ratio, the profit margin on sales, the return on total assets, the price earnings ratio, earnings per share, and average collection period. These are all indicators of liquidity, debt management, profitability, market value, and efficiency. So these are all key components to financial analysis. Now this week, we move to chapter five. As I said earlier, it's the time value of money. What is how to value money? We know where our numbers are. We know that the balance sheet tells us that assets equals liabilities and equity. Equity is made up of stock <coughs> and retained earnings. But also we have to, have to determine what is the current value of our assets, liabilities and equity in the market? What's the present value versus the future value? Investors are going to invest in our company if we have potential for increasing the future value of assets over time much higher than the present value. That means the company's valuation will go up and that means we'll be making money. But that does not, doesn't always happen. So for the this in corporate finance, you need to understand the definitions of future values, present value, cash flow values, amortization values. And these are all highlighted here in this tab in our in-class review, which are the highlights of chapter five. Another reason why we study these is because it gets us to better know how to use a spreadsheet. One of the things we're working on this class is with the student portfolio, you're working in a spreadsheet. And a lot of problems we're gonna be doing down the road in this class is be working with a spreadsheet. So being familiar with calculations and formulas in a spreadsheet is a key component to your business administration degree. You're gonna be using spreadsheets in many of your classes. So getting to understand how to do this is very important. For example, one of the concepts of the time value of money is future value. What's the future value of money? Well, let's say I have $100 today and I wanna invest that for 10 years 
at 8%. Vis-a-vis, -vis, I have $100 a day and I want to invest that for, excuse me, for 10 years, I beg your pardon, for 10 years at 4%. What is the future value of that? What is $100 today in 10 years if we increase it 8% every year? Well, there's a way of doing it by hand. Just take $100 times 1.1 and do that for eight years. There's an easier way to do it in a spreadsheet and that's up here in the formulas calculations. Let's bring down the formulas file and look for function. And in the function, you will see a, a variety of functions that we can choose from. We will go to the financial function, since this is a finance class, and we will look for the future value function. It's called FV, future value. There it is right there. If we click on that function, we now can calculate $100 over 10 years at 8%. So if I click on OK, up comes the future value function box, and we can do this. What is our interest rate? Well, it's 8%. The number of periods in 10 years, that's 10 years. There's no payment. This is not a payment process where the present value is. What, is, what do we have today? I'm going to put in minus $100. That's $100. I hit OK. Oops, did the wrong one there. Excuse me. <laughs> I put that in for 100 periods. It's 10 periods. And there we go. $215.89. See if you can do that on your computer. Taking the $10 to the interest rate of 8% for 10 periods at a present value of minus 100. And here's why I put minus 100. That's like the disbursement of money. If I put in just positive 100, my answer would be negative 215.89, which is fine. I mean, 215.89 is what we want, but sometimes students get a little bit freaked out by saying, I'm losing money, I'm losing $215.89. No, you're not, because you didn't put in minus 100. So if I go back and put in the minus, the, it turns into a positive. Let's do this calculation for 20 years. Let's say we're going to hold it on to the longer at 8%. Function, financial, future value. There it is right there. Now the rate is 8% still, but the number of periods is 20 years. The present value still is minus $100. And notice it now becomes $466.10. That's the future value of $100 today, increasing by 8% a year for 20 years, $466.10. Now let's say, and this is more closer to today's times, let's say the interest rate is only 4% of on $100 for 10 years. Let's go back to our formula, function, financial, future value. Now the rate is 4%, just type in 4%. The number of periods is 10, no payment, but the present value, is minus still 100, $148.02. Notice the interest rate is dramatically lower, thus the amount we receive in the future is less. Let's do that for 20 years, just for the sake of practicing. Why don't you try to do that if you can? Financial, future value. 4%, 20 years, minus 100, $219.11. So see if you can do that in your own spreadsheet with those function uh, formulas. It makes it a lot easier to calculate this out if you know how to use these formula functions. Well, that's the present value. That's looking at $100 today. What's it value going to be in the future based on the amount of time and the interest rate? Well, what is the present value mean? It's taking money in the future 
to determine the present value today. In other words, I know I have $215.89 in the future at 8%. If I discount that $215.89 back at 8%, I should get $100. That's what I started out with. That's the present value of that amount. And many times we have amounts in the future. What is it? What is its value today? Function, financial, present value. PV now is our function. Present value. There it is right there. Interest rate is 8%. And, and when it comes to present value, this interest rate is called the discount rate. The number of periods is 10. The future value now is that minus 215.89. That's the future value. And that's what this number is here. What is this present value discounted back at 8% for 10 years? It better be 100. And it is. That's the present value of 215.89. In this case, we're going the other way. We're going back in time instead of ahead in time. Let's do it the 20 year one. Function, financial, present value. The rate is 8%. Now the periods are 20 years. And the future value of 466, 10. $100. It works. See if you can do that for the 4% one, but I'm sure you'll come up with $100. In other words, that's the present or discounted value of money in the future. What is its worth today? So that's, that's two looks at present and future value. And that's two things we need to be familiar with. You'll have some questions uh, in uh, assignment two next week, which will ask you to do these calculations. Another idea of the time value money is getting cash flow in the future and what is it worth today? In other words, I anticipate making $200 in year one, $400 in year three, and $300 in year, $400 in year two, $300 in year three. That's if I total all those up over three years, I'm making $900. But what is its present value today? I'm getting $900 in the future. What is it actually worth today? And let's say the current interest rate in the market for this present value is 6%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discount each one of these back at 6% and then total them up. And that's the present value of this future cash flow of $900. This is called an annuity, a series of cash payments in the future which happens quite a bit. So let's determine that. What is the present value of $200 one year out at 6%? Function, financial, present value. The interest rate in this problem is 6%. It's for one year, right, one period. And the future value, we're getting $200 minus $200 in this first year. That's the present value of that $200 today, getting it over the next year at 6%. Let's do year two. Function, financial, present value. Six percent. Two periods now, not one, but two periods, and the future value is $400. We're getting this $400 in year two years ahead. Its present value, $356 at 6%. And finally, let's do the third year of payment function, financial, present value, 6%. Three periods now going out. The future value net is $300 minus 300. 
and there it is, $250,189. So the $900 we're getting in the next three years discounted back at 6% is $796.56. Okay. That's important to know because it tells us what this money is worth in today's dollars when I'm spending it to acquire that cash flow. Okay. Let's say I'm spending $750 to generate this money. I'm spending $750 today. All right. Well, it's generating $900 in return over the next three years. So if I'm spending $750 today, all right. That means I'm going to be making a present value profit. Oops, all right. Should be a minus, shouldn't it? Let's make this dollar, make this math easier. We're gonna be running into this later on, there we go. $46.56, that's, that's called the present value, all right? Or if our cost was $700, that means we'd be making $96.56 in actual money because we're discounting the 6%, the $900 to this amount. And a lot we're gonna be doing this a lot in chapters nine, 10, and 11 in our course where we're looking at an investment, that's the $700, and the cash flow generated off that investment in present value. And is the net, this is called net present value. I type that out. That's important. All right, that's the net present value. Well, another way of doing this, and let's, let's put this out of here. Bring this back over here. There we go. Okay. Now there's another way we can do this. Remember here, we did it one year after another. It's to be a big pain. What happens if this project goes out 20 years or 10 years? That's a lot of calculations. One by one by one, we're doing it for each period of time. Well, there's another way of calculating this in one function. Formulas, function, financial, and it's called NPV, net present value. There it is right there, NPV. So all we have to do here is type in the interest rate, which is 6%. And then under the values, we just have to paint where our values are. Notice here, I'm painting that. So it's putting in the formula D25 through 27, 200, 400, and 300. There it is right there under values. And I hit okay. And I still get 796.56, just like I did it here one year at a time. Know how long that took? Here in one formula, I can do that rather quickly. Let me show it to you one more time. Formula, function, financial, net present value. So we're doing, we're combining all the three years into one formula. We'd have to type in the discount rate or 6%. Then we go to the values and put in our values. Hit OK, and we get 796. And that's how we get these numbers here still, the investment, and still we'd be 9656 as the net present value answer. The difference between the dis, this is called discounted cash flow we're discounting the cash flow at 6%, comparing it to the investment. This is an important topic that we're gonna be using a lot of in this class, the present value of a series of cash flows. Two ways of calculating it, one by one year, every year doing it, or using the NPV function 
and combining them all into one calculation. Either way, it still comes up with the same answer. Our last area of time value of money, and you do not have to worry about doing this calculation. That's why I put it all in here in one format. But you have to understand the definition of what this is. Up here, present value, future value, net present value calculations, you have to you have to know how to do. You're going to be doing those. Here, it's just understanding the definition of what is called amortization. The definition of amortization is a series of equal payments over time to pay off a debt obligation. Anybody here ever borrow money for a car? That's an amortized loan. Anybody here ever buy a house? That's an amortized loan. Why? You're making a series of equal payments over time to pay off the debt. So in this example here, I am borrowing or I'm buying a car that costs $40,000. I'm down paying $2,000. So I'm going to go and try to find financing at $38,000. So I go and my FICO score is 650. So they give me an interest rate of 3.5% on a four-year car loan about right. My FICO score is six, might, might even be a little bit higher, but I'll go with the three and a half percent. So the, so the credit agency or the car loan agency or whoever is financing my car, might be a credit union, whatever, says, okay, Mr. Hassey, we'll lend you $38,000 for four years. And we're going to give you the annual, annual interest rate of three and a half percent for those four years. That means, Mr. Hassey, you're going to pay us $849.53 every month for four years. That's 48 months. You're going to pay $40,777.35 on a $38,000 loan. Wow. Well, you know, that's not a bad idea. First of all, I need a car. Second of all, I don't have $38,000. I have $2,000, but I don't have $38,000. So why don't I borrow that money? Now I have a car. I can have fun, I can go to work, I can make money, and it's gonna cost me a little bit more, but the convenience of spreading that out over a series of payments over many years is worth it. Welcome to financing. <laughs> Companies do this, as you know, we do this all the time. So this concept is called amortization. And it's, it's basically a time value of money spread out over in this case, four years, 48 payments. And notice how I calculated the $849.53. I, I use what is called the PM. Again, you do not have to do this calculation, so don't worry about it. But I wanted to show you how it's done. You use the PMT function in financial. It's called the payment function. And you put in the number of periods. In this case, it's four years, monthly payments. That's 48 payments. And the interest rate per period, well, it's a 3.5% loan per year. If I divide 3.5% by 12 months, it's 0.291% or the decimal 0 0.00291 and so on. That's the interest rate per month. I put that into my present payment calculation with the principal being negative 38,000, I get $849.53. That's my monthly payment. That's how the bank calculates those loan payments. And then every month we're paying interest as part of the principal on the loan. So the balance times the interest rate per period gives us the interest rate for that period. The difference between the interest and the payment calculation has got to be the principal, how much we're paying down on the loan. That subtracted from the beginning balance gives us our balance at the end of the first payment. And this goes on and on. Again, we're always making consistent payments, but now we're only going to, our balance is down to that. So we take that interest, more principal. Notice the interest payments decline, the principal payments increase as we go in the time. And finally, when we get all down to month 48, we're still making 849.53 payments, but now we've paid off the loan and the car. 
$38,000 of principal payments, $2,777.35 of interest payments. There's the total. And that's how that works. For a house, it would be over 20 years, even 30 years. This is how we, they calculate and we use amortized loans, which for consumers like us, and for companies who have very little collateral to put up for financing, monthly payments like this where in interest and principal are being paid every month on the outstanding obligation is, the what, is what happens in finance in an amortized loan. We'll look at non-amortized loans later, but non-amortized loans are loans where the company is large enough where they can get a loan and they only have to pay interest only during the course of the period and the principal at the end of the note being due. Sounds like a bond payment. We'll talk about those next week. So that's an amortized loan. Just know the definition of what that is. A series of equal payments over time where interest and principal are changing after every payment and paying off the balance. This is what chapter five is all about. Know these key concepts, future, present, present value of cash flows, amortization in your review of chapter five. And we'll practice these next week in assignment number two. Okay, well, let's look at our work that we have to do this week, assignment number one. First of all, here's our Blackboard, and I hope you've been paying attention to this on a daily or weekly basis, hopefully daily. Uh, we have our uh, Zoom and YouTube links. This is where I post the lecture video. There's last week's lecture video. There's week one's lecture video. There's the link to our online course, all right. our online office hours at twos on Tuesdays. We have the student discussion forum, which uh, you put questions or concerns you have of the class and also sign up for our professor meetings. Some of you still have not signed up. As of today, Wednesday, uh, these students are still seeing me tomorrow, Thursday. If you have not seen me yet, make sure you see me rather soon or uh, it's a zero for a grade. So clean that up if you have not already done that. Also check your student portfolios. If you don't see a grade under your portfolio discussion, make sure you've cleaned up any errors that you might have had that I've asked you to fix. Do that so you can get a grade posted to that as well. Here's our week three file folder, time value of money. There's my introduction video right there. Our agenda, you just click on that and it gives us the agenda like you've seen before. Definitions of the chapter, a PowerPoint, a nice, a little video. Some review problems taken out of the chapter. Again, you do not have to do these. These are just practice if you want them with the solutions. And some further videos taken uh, for the definition of what we just talked about, the time value money, if you want to see them. And then we now have an assignment posted in the assignments and final examination file folder. It's assignment number one, it's called the introduction to finance. I give you two files, they're both exactly the same. One is just a PDF version, one is a Word doc version. You can use either one. And what you need to do is find the answers and type them out either on the Word document or in the PDF document. Uh, and then resubmit the work back to me by next Sunday at midnight. You can do it in the Word file. You can do it in an Excel file, but I don't need, really think you need to do an Excel file for this week. In for future weeks, you will, but there's not much, there isn't any, hardly any Excel work in this file, so probably just do it on Word file. What you do not need to do is write the answers out on a pic piece of paper and take a picture of it and send me the GPG or the GIF file of your work. That will not be accepted you have to put together a computer file and post the computer file, all right, by answering the questions. Do not send me a photocopy or a photo of your work on a piece of paper. Uh, no, 
no, no, no, that's not going to happen. If you do that, I'll just say, I'll send it back to you saying, you got to submit this in a computer file. Again, if you, any of you have difficulties working with computers, you need to contact me and let me know. I assume that you all can do this. This assignment represents 10% of your course grade. You do not post this assignment to email. Everything has to be posted to the assignment folder. And here's how you do that. You just get your mouse and you click on the title right here. Assignment number one, introduction to finance. Click on that. And up will come the submission file folder. Right here, it says assignment submission. And this is where you take the file that you just completed and you can either drag it from your desktop right into this box or goes to or click on browse local files. And let's see, I'm gonna let's see, I'm going to my desktop. And here's a file. Oh, here's assignment number one file. I'll click on that and hit open. And now that has been uploaded to my grade center. And then, well, here's a key thing. You have to hit submit. Then I will receive it. It will upload to my Blackboard grade center, but you have to hit submit, okay? Let's do that one more time. First of all, we're in our assignment number one, introduction to finance file folder. You download these files and work on it, complete your work, save the file, click on the title of this file folder, up comes a submission file. You can either drag, let me just do that for you. You can either drag this right into this box. See how I did that? I just dragged it into the box. Or you can go to browse local files, find the file on your desktop and hit open and there it is. Hit submit, and now Professor Hassey can grade your grades. All right. There's no email sent to you saying, Mr. Hassey's got your grade. Once you hit submit, that's it. There's no confirmation. I, I assume it is right. So don't anybody panic that you don't get a confirmation. It's okay. I got it. As long as you hit submit, I got it. If there was a problem, I, I'll be in touch with you. And then once I receive it, I will grade it and then upload it back into your grade center so you have the corrected file back to you in a couple of, uh, in a couple of days next week. And the grade will be in your grade center. That's how this works. All right, let's see what this assignment looks like. Here it is right here. Let me make this a little bigger. There you go. Assignment number one, business finance summer 2021. This is the this is the PDF file, but the word file is exactly the same. And you could just type in your answers underneath it, right here. It's a series of, of questions. I give you how much points each question is worth. This is all due Sunday at midnight. If you need extra time completing the assignment, you can submit it to me on Monday or Tuesday, but if you're going to do that, you have to let me know Sunday via email. Mr. Hassey, I need an extra day to post my work. Fine, that is okay. If you don't send me an email, then you're gonna be locked out of the file at midnight and will not be able to post your work. If you send me an email, I'll be able to unlock the file so you can post your work after midnight. So it's a series of questions and I give you the chapters that these questions are taken from. Some are answers, short answers. Some are multiple choice. Some are, here's a problem that has to do with financial statements. So I give you some information. You don't have to really put this in an Excel spreadsheet, but you can just type out, you're looking for three things, earnings before interest in taxes, net income and cash flow from operation based on this information. Requires a little thinking. Here's another short answer question. Here's another short answer question. Here's another short answer question. 
But here's it, something different. Question number 10. What is earnings per share? Look it up. Give me the definition. What does it indicate to a firm and an investor? Okay. Now, here's the important thing. Select one company from your class portfolio. Don't forget to tell me which company you select and find the earnings per share for the last three fiscal years for this company. So if you have, you pick one company from your portfolio, not all of them, one, look up the company. You can go to the company's website. You can go to Google. You can go to Yahoo Finance. A lot of ways of looking this up. Find the earnings per share for the last three fiscal years. That's 12 months. So 2020, 19, and 18 probably be what you're looking for. And how have those earnings per share changed over three years? Might want to give a percentage change each year. Just explain to me how they've changed. Give me your opinion about that or look it up. So remember, question 10 is a short answer problem, but you have to pick one company from your portfolio to get the data. Same thing with question 11. Using that same company, find these three financial and analytical information for the business for the most two recent fiscal years. Not three as earnings per share, but two fiscal years. That's 20 and 19 probably. What is their current ratio, debt ratio, and profit margin for those two years? A brief comment for each on what they represent as analysis of the company. What does the current ratio tell you? What's the debt ratio tell you? What's the profit margin? Now, you can get this information or you can calculate yourself by looking at their financials. Current ratio, debt ratio, profit margin. Remember, we did that last week with that sample financial statement. And that's assignment number one. A couple of, a little bit of everything. You're looking at your portfolio. You're finding some financial statement information. You're doing some definitions and multiple choice. Read each question carefully. And this is the first of a few or like three assignments we will have during the course of our summer term. If you have any questions, you can send me an email put it in the discussion forum, anything you want, I will answer the questions about if you don't understand something, but I will not give you the answers or verify answers for you. That's assignment number one due Sunday, June 27th. Okay, so that's our lecture video for this week number three past, present, future, and finance, the definitions of present value, future value, cash flow, present value, and the amortization. A look at assignment number one, your, fir your first assignment work, and our discussions heading into the future. Next week, we're going to talk about chapter six, which is bonds, chapter seven, which is stocks. And you're going to have no assignment next week, but another discussion posts to do some work on your portfolios for next week. And we'll talk about that next week in my introduction video this weekend, coming weekend, and in our work for week number four. As always, I stand by for any questions. Good luck with your assignment. If you haven't yet talked to me in professor meetings, please do so. Have a great rest of the week, everybody, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.